Hey guys, not sure what happened, but apparently I hit the next key in the entire video filmed with the Picard logo inside of Strange New Worlds. I'm not re-recording it, so uh, sorry about that. Welcome, my friends. We are gathered here today to discuss Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 2, and this is going to be a breakdown or a, a brief discussion on the possible episode titles for that season. I believe the wonderful channel SciFanatics is the first person to bring these to the public, so all do respect and all do admiration there. I'm sure most of you or all of you are subscribed there. I'm just a small channel compared to that. And the second thing I do want to address is I have already reacted to these on another wonderful YouTube channel. I reacted to them cold as I hadn't seen them yet. So if you want to check that out, I recommend doing so and just checking out the channel in general. I will link both of these things below and possibly in the video if it lets me do that. But that channel was called After the Snap and it's just a fantastic channel in general. So definitely go check that out. Let's actually start discussing these titles with episode one. This one called The Broken Circle. Obviously my speculation here as well as most people's is that this is going to be the continuation of our cliffhanger Una being arrested being put on a court-martial because of her genetic engineering status but more so because she lied about it for so long is I think the sticking point here. We saw some scenes from the trailer that seemed to address this and I have to imagine it's going to be dealt with up front because based on the trailer she is in a heck of a lot of this season so it's not like she's going to be sitting out most of it unless that was all misdirection. So that as well as Laan leaving the ship at the end of season two and I guess you could even throw in the death of Hammer. the broken circle could be the crew has been broken. They're no longer that family they've broken that link and that's one thing I did want to point out this very much reminded me of the broken link from DS9 and the circle from DS9 which was a terrorist group I believe none of those things probably have any reference to this in fact I don't see how they could but those are obviously things that were indicative to me of Star Trek and I think this is going to be kind of sort of bringing the gang back together after what happened in season one moving on to episode two ad astra per aspera which is a Latin phrase I'm sure I just butchered which basically translates to to the stars through difficulties okay Star Trek has a history of this as well as most sci-fi, just using fun Latin phrases that uh, don't necessarily relate to the actual episode proper. This was, of course, just used in a recent science fiction movie, Ad Astra, as well. And I think that's most likely just what they're doing here, because this phrase, to the stars through difficulties, has a deep connection to a lot of the Star Trek characters we've met in the past, but specifically to me, the ones that stood out are La'an and Uhura. La'an being the last remnant, the last survivor of her ship, her family, after that horrible incident with the Gorn, she was sent off as a refugee into the stars. So it could be an actual episode relating to her history, because if she truly did leave the ship and hasn't come back yet at the beginning of episode one, maybe this is her dealing with her past and coming back into the fold. Also Uhura, because of her family, the history with the death of her family and her joining Starfleet through adversity, especially after after last season where she lost Hammer, we lost Hammer, still salty about that, but that was kind of a, a moment for her, and we do see some indications that there's going to be a crashed shuttle she's related to in this season, losing her family in a shuttle crash. Could this be flashback she's dealing with, or could she be caught in a similar situation that causes her to reflect on these past incidents and have to deal with them in some way? Also, this is a motto. It is the motto of the state of Kansas. So, of course, I thought maybe they're using this because it relates to a specific character in this show from Kansas or just in Star Trek from Kansas. Really only have a couple of people that are linked to Kansas and none of them have any sort of relation to really Strange New Worlds era. The biggest contender I could find is that girl, that Q girl from TNG who lived in Kansas, the sister from the Wonder Years, but I absolutely don't imagine that will have any connection to this. So probably the Kansas thing is just a, uh, a red herring, if even that. Okay, moving into episode three, and we're back to the Shakespeare well. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Obviously, this is a very famous quote from Macbeth, and it has been quoted before in Star Trek. I will save that for a little bit, because I think that based on tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, this is going to be a time travel and possibly a time loop episode. If it isn't a time loop, it's probably going to be the episode where they travel back to the past. We see Kirk and La'an in what looks like 21st century Earth. 
Also want to throw this out there as a curveball. Maybe it's not 21st century Earth. Maybe it's one of those patented Star Trek planets that evolved exactly like Earth. Probably not going to be the case. I do want to throw that out there, though. However, I did mention this has been quoted as an episode title in Star Trek before in the original series. So that episode takes place after this one chronologically, but that was called All Our Yesterdays. And that was the episode where the crew went down to a planet that was about to disappear because of a nova. And they found this weird library which had portals into the distant past of that planet. And some of them got trapped in different time periods. Because this is taking place before that, I cannot imagine that they're actually going to visit that planet and uncover these secrets in this episode. But they've already broken the continuity a little bit in this show so to do so again by visiting a planet they have no right to be visiting yet i can't imagine they would actually do that but i do still hold out hope that maybe there is a connection there episode four among the lotus eaters my very first thought about hearing this was the star trek picard i believe season one finale or the penultimate episode where they went down to that fancy hippie robot planet where uh soji ended up staying and their ships were basically giant flowers. I'm not sure if they were actually lotuses or orchids or what they were, but that is the first image I got. I believe this is actually more in reference to the Greek mythological story about the lotus eaters being a race of people who lived on an island, and they ate the fruit of the lotus tree, which caused them to go into this sort of drugged-out, peaceful sleep, lose the ambition, lose the ability to actually want to better themselves. So I feel like they're probably going to visit a planet under a similar situation. Kind of reminds me of that, uh, what is it, the apple? I uh, can't remember. It was the, oh, the way to Eden. The one where the hippies were being transported to another planet, the Garden of Eden, to find that apple. Something maybe similar, a planet where a lot of the people are no longer bettering themselves. They're no longer forwarding their society because of a drug or because they become too reliant on some form of technology or quasi-mystical thing. You know, the typical old single episodes of Star Trek where they come in, Kirk kicks something over and passes judgment on their society. I could see them doing a one-off episode similar to that here. All right, at the halfway point, we have episode five, Charades. Now, this could be one of two things. An absurd pretense intended to create a pleasant or respectful appearance. So I'm putting on a charade. I'm not actually going about this in my true intention. Or a game in which players guess a word or phrase from pantomimed clues. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's possibly that one. There is a group out there, a race they encounter, a species they encounter, that they have to communicate with through means other than language. Maybe they have to use complex hand signals. Maybe this group doesn't have a spoken language or they don't have the capacity to hear, so they have to try and conversate with each other. I think conversate's a word. Using some form of hand movements, hand gestures, that sort of thing. And that leads me into episode six, Lost in Translation, which seems very similar in concept if I'm following the right threads here. A Babel type situation where the Universal Translator goes out or it just doesn't work on a species. Perhaps Uhura has to translate using her varied abilities. Or perhaps, like I said in Charades, they have to come up with a way to communicate independently. Now, whether or not these will be a two-part or a linked episode, I'm not sure if we have a guaranteed set of rules that we're not allowed to get two-parters in this show, but I feel like that could be an interesting link, or it could just be a back-to-back -back similar type of experience, although I don't know how I would feel about two episodes back-to-back -back featuring the same threads if they aren't actually connected. Episode 7, Those Old Scientists. So I didn't come up with this. It seems like the theory, the prevailing theory out there is this is going to be the Lower Decks crossover episode because Jack Ransom's character referred to the TOS era as Those Old Scientists. I don't know how or why this will play into things. Now, I have seen on at least one channel, the wonderful YouTube channel Hailing Frequencies, a breakdown of the trailer that seems to indicate the Guardian of Forever may be present in this trailer. Now, if you remember your Star Trek history, we encountered that for the first time in Alpha Canon in TOS, City on the Edge of Forever. So can we encounter this yet? Well, I think there is a potential for us to do so without breaking the timeline. If the characters traveling back in time are the Lower Decks characters and they don't necessarily allow our Strange New Worlds characters to interact with the Guardian, possibly 
that's the facilitation for the uh, lower decks characters to come backwards. Also, I could foresee a potential storyline where we do encounter it, potentially since we do know Kirk is going to be in the season, even he encounters it, and the Guardian says something along the lines of, you've come too early, you're not supposed to encounter me yet, and they have to fix history because of the shenanigans and mistakes from the Lower Decks crew, and that ends up resetting the timeline, although I do know a lot of people hate these reset buttons where everything's reset at the end of the episode. So those are just my thoughts on how they could potentially get around the canon damaging issues if they were to go that way. And speaking of canon breaking issues, episode 8, Under the Cloak of War. Now we've already established in Star Trek Discovery the Klingons do have a cloaking capability or at least something of a similar semblance. And even if you go back to Enterprise, the Romulans had a cloak back then. So we have already established a break in the timeline where cloaking technology exists before it was originally intended to be introduced to Star Trek in the original series. Obviously Klingons are appearing in this season and they have the forehead bumps. Do they have a cloaking device here? I'm going to throw another wild curveball out here and say the Klingons that we meet in this episode do have a cloaking device. Keep in mind, if they do, this is before cloaking technology was outlawed in Starfleet in the Federation. The Treaty of Elderon does not occur for another probably, I'm not even sure, another 40 years from this. So it is conceivable that we are going to the Klingons in an attempt to form an alliance against the Gorn. I know this is kind of a wild and wacky theory, but it did seem like that Spock and the Klingons were getting along rather chummily, so are we trying to create a tentative alliance against a potentially deadlier threat with the Klingons, and is it conceivable that our Enterprise will use a cloaking device? I sure hope that isn't the case because all of that TOS history with the cloaking device first being discovered. I'm just trying to throw out there what I could see happening based on what we've seen in the trailer and these episode titles, knowing for a fact that canon has already been disrupted by cloaks pre-existing the original series in these shows. Going on to episode 9, and I think this might be a nice, fun, lighthearted break between two fairly heavy episodes if my Gorn type of uh, subplot here is correct. This one is called Subspace Rhapsody, which 100% reminds me of Cowboy Bebop, but I believe that this is meant more uh, to illustrate a point. This is a way to sew songs together. It illustrates how oral epic poets, or rhapsodies, would build a repertoire of diverse myths, tales, and jokes in the content of an epic poem. So is this going to be somehow related to uh, subspace being linked together in some manner? Is this going to be a, uh, a way to bring people together? I don't know. It feels like it might more so be a cool, fun title for an episode that's lighthearted and involves music because we did see Spock playing the lute in the trailer. So it's probably just going to be a kick your feet up, similar to that episode in season one where we got our characters running around the ship playing different parts in a play, even though there were dire consequences and stakes involved in that episode. And finally, we're up to episode 10. And as I mentioned a few times before, the Gorn are highly present in this theorizing here. This one is titled Hegemony, which is, as we know, the name of the Gorn Empire or the Gorn Civilization, the Gorn Hegemony. Hegemony is a political, economic, and military predominance of one state over other states. So does this mean there are a vast array of other beings within this Gorn civilization? If you go look at Beta Canon, there are a hell of a lot of different types of Gorn, and they've all kind of evolved or been put in a caste system to fulfill various different purposes. So you've got the warrior caste, you've got the more smart political caste, you have all these different Gorn, and they all look and act differently. So think of something along the lines of the Zindi from Enterprise, but they're all different types of reptilians. That could help explain why the Gorn we saw in season one were so vastly different from the ones we've encountered before. And that would help shore up that plot hole that a lot of fans seemingly don't like. Now, I know there's also the issue of the Gorn appearing prior to where they're supposed to in canon. But as I've already talked about here, Discovery and even Enterprise have already kind of established the original series canon is a bit muddy as far as when things actually take place for the first time. 
Am I 100% on board with this? No, but we have to take what we can get, and I can understand them wanting to stretch credulity a little bit, and if they're just going to establish a new canon, as long as they stick to their own, and they don't do anything wildly outrageous, I'm probably going to be okay with that. But what do you think? Do you have any ideas on what these episode titles might mean? Heck, they might not actually be the real episode titles. This could all be a fake leak for all I know, but it was fun thinking about it, and I have to say, the more we get distanced from Picard, the more excited I actually am for Strange New Worlds. Leave all your thoughts below. Like, share, subscribe, do all those fancy YouTube things. What did you think? What do you think this season is going to be about? Remember, it was filmed at the same time as season one, so it's probably not going to vary too much in quality from that first season. Do all those YouTube things, and until next time, computer and program.